Ja, guten Morgen, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Herzlich a very good morning, everybody. And a warm welcome to the Grinding Hub 2022. We are very happy that so many of you are taking part in our event that so many journalists have enrolled, more than 60 journalists from over 20 countries have enrolled. And we are also very pleased to have so many exhibitors on board. The preview is the start for the hot phase before the grinding hub, which starts on 17th of May. And we are very happy that in the beautiful month of May, we finally have live trade fairs again. So hopefully that is a great comeback for the trade fairs. I'm Silke Becker. I'm the spokeswoman at VW, VDW, and it's my pleasure to guide you through this event. VDW works together with cooperation partners, and you will hear about this, and we are hosting the event of the Grinding Hub. Our event today starts with a press conference on the current um, stage of the preparations of the trade fair. Then you can pose your questions either by raising your hand and you can speak to us or you can write it into the chat to the Grinding Hub host. And I will explain this later again. After hearing about the concept of the trade fair, we will um, get more information on the trends of grinding technology. And then we will get the elevator pitches of our exhibitors. And they are going to present their highlights, highlights for the trade fair. The whole event is hosted in German and in English. At the bottom of the screen, you can select the language. During the presentations, your microphones are muted, but we will unmute your microphone if you want to say something. Now we get to the first item on the agenda. First of all, I would like to welcome our partners, Dr. Wilfried Schäfer. He is the um, general manager of um, VD, VD, VDW. Then Mr. Goebel and Gunnar May from Messen und Events, our cooperation partner, that is Messe Stuttgart. So I pass the floor to Dr. Schäfer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would also like to welcome you here for the preview of the Grinding Hub this year. My name is Wilfried Schäfer. I'm the um, general director of the VDW, the German Machine Tool Builders Association. And I think most of you know us. We are also um, organizers of the AMB and the IMO Hanover. And we also support um, trade fairs in, on different continents in Asia, Europe, and Americas. Now with these experiences, we are in a very good position for this project of the Grinding Hub. The title is Bring Solutions to the Surface. And this is what it's all about, showing solutions which give a perspective to our visitors and um, the industry. With this new project of the trade fair, we start in Stuttgart and we want to be the new hub, the international platform for grinding technology. Maybe a little review on how it started. Of course, the pandemic has put the whole trade fair business upside down. There were many shifts and at the beginning of 20, 21, um, several companies approached us and they had the plea that we should um, generate a new platform for grinding technology. And we looked into this question and then decided that we can fulfill this wish. With Grinding Hub, we found a new name. Uh, and of course, we want to become the new hub. We looked 
for a location. And after some research and considerations, we found Messe Stuttgart as a good partner. There are many things um, in favor of this. Um, the um, very good location in terms of transportation and also the opportunity to find a time slot and that was possible due to all the shifted trade fairs here at Messe Stuttgart. Now, as an important partner, we managed to get a um, Swiss, um, Swiss man, an important partner in grinding technology. Their Swiss man is a big community. The exhibitor is from Switzerland and they are um, a large player in the industry and also operating internationally. So they are a large player. And I'm also very happy that since the beginning of the year, we have the Schleiftagung uh, and as a partner on board. This also allows us um, to have better networking within the industry and we can bring industry and science together. Dr. Sebastian Barth is uh, our keynote speaker and he is going to talk about climate protection and sustainability as an innovation driver for grinding technology. And he is going to give us insights into the trends of the industry. So with this team, we are in a very good position to shape the trade fair from the industry for the industry. And on the timeline, you can track which milestones we have reached so far and what we still have planned. Not even a year has passed since the official launch of the fair. And the enrollment has been in place since April last year. And the last registrations were in September 21. And we're now very pleased um, that we got such positive response. And my colleague will present this to you. Now we've already started into communication with these international press conferences. And today is the kickoff of the preview with some of our exhibitors who are going to give you an insight into their novelties, which they will present here in May in Stuttgart. Now, the economic framework conditions um, have been as good as um, not for a long time, but um, due to the war in Ukraine, it's a different context with um, higher risks and they do not only apply to the export because it only accounts for only 2%, um, so it's not that relevant, uh, but it's more about the uncertainties caused um, once again by disrupted supply chains and the high prices for energy and raw materials. And you probably follow that in on the news. The future is uncertain and we hope that there will be a solution very soon. In 2021, the international machine tool industry recorded a growth of around 18% after the previous slump. And according to our estimations, this is a global production of 69 billion euros. Grinding technology is one of the top manufacturing processes within the machine tool industry. Um, it's used in finishing and therefore it must meet the highest demands in surface finishing. Internationally, it is a small but a fine industry with a share of 7% of worldwide machine tool production. And you can see it here on the diagram. Um, we have um, symmetric elements with um, turning and lathe. In 2020, grinding technology worth 4.3 billion euros was produced worldwide. And Germany is the second largest supplier behind China and ahead of Japan, with a share of around one fifth. The largest sales markets worldwide are China, the USA and Germany, with shares of 33, 15 and 9% respectively. 
Last year, Germany produced a grinding technology worth 805 million euros. And according to preliminary figures, this corresponds to a decline of 5% compared to 2020. More than four fifths of production went into exports, which um, fell even more sharply with a decline of 8%. And um, some of the most important markets um, are not growing yet. One of the biggest markets is China and also in Europe, the biggest one, France and Switzerland have performed well. And USA, our second um, important market. And Italy and Austria with a similar um, models. Now in 2021, um, the um, imports of machine tools, including parts and accessories, increased by 11%. And for grinding technology, imports were 13% higher than in the previous year. So they are now at 245 million euros. The most important suppliers were Switzerland, um, Czech Republic and China. And we are convinced that after this slump in 2020 um, due to the pandemic, the grinding hub can help to bring momentum back into the international business and strengthen the exchange between old and new partners. So it will bring together customers and suppliers. Thank you very much for listening. And I pass over to my colleague, Mr. Goebel. Good morning, everybody. I would also like to welcome you here. I'm Martin Goebel, and I would like to tell you a bit more about the Grinding Hub concept and explain what makes it special. But first, I want to reinforce our goal of making the Grinding Hub the new hub of grinding technology. Stuttgart is set to be the international meeting point for supply and demand in this flourishing industry. This includes um, demonstrating solutions along the entire value chain. It, this means the areas of technologies and processes, machine concepts, automation and digitalization, as well as quality assurance and the associated peripherals. The idea is to address the actual needs and current interests of the customers. We take the slogan, bring solution to the surface, literally. Exhibitors present their latest products and projects in two special exhibition areas, the Industry Grinding Solution Park and the Science Grinding Solution Park. With this approach, we are managing the balancing act between the world of business and research and helping to better bring them together. It goes without saying that a powerful and competitive trade fair concept calls for effective communication which is why in the run-up to the Grinding Hub, we have launched a fully blown media campaign through the internationally experienced teams from Messe Stuttgart and the VDW. We have um, regular press releases, um, economic reports, with which we can provide fascinating insights into grinding technology. Exhibitors and experts will also have the chance to comment. In addition, the preview here and our foreign press conferences in February will present the opportunity for the international trade media to get closer to the new trade fair. To make sure it's not only the media and exhibitors, we are reaching out to and keeping them updated. Since November, we have published a monthly newsletter once a month. And we inform them in eight issues. Um, we keep our target groups up to date. And it's uh, information about the industry and the trade fair itself. As I said before, we want to offer a trade fair concept with a future. And we um, increasingly use communication through um, social media channels like Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and industry arena. Um, with this, we want to create reach and visibility for the Grinding Hub. And also we want to offer a platform for networking and sharing. We also want to enter into a dialogue with our exhibitors in this way. For this reasons, we offer a social media package that is a package which is constantly expanded. And that's our support to ensure successful online communication 
um, with share picks, banners and text modules. And from the 17th to the 20th of May, we will have live reporting from the trade fair with the latest impression, fascinating interviews and exciting stories. The Grinding Cup is also gaining traction through a strong um, accompanying program. And it includes the two joint stands that I already mentioned, that Science Grinding Solution Park and the Industry Grinding Solution Park, with their novel applied production solutions and innovations from the science sector. The world of research is lending its support mainly through the members of Scientific Society for Production Engineering, WGP. And as I mentioned at the beginning, since the turn of the year, we have also been cooperating with Schleiftagung a grinding conference hosted by RWTH Aachen University. Since it was still impossible to meet in Fellbach in person, in January, the Schleiftagung community will reconvene at the Grinding Hub in May. We want to also offer a platform for small and young companies and also companies with a smaller budget. And this way, it also invites companies with a small budget. And in addition, we are focusing on digitalization in the production, and you will be able to see the latest developments and trends there. Also on board is the tried and proven line demonstration on worldwide data connectivity. And this case uh, related to grinding technology, which has already worked very well at the IMO Hanover and IMO Milan. The demonstration runs under the UMATI brand, the joint interoperability initiative of VDW and VDMA. Now in our view, and it became evident now, there is no way around digital services. So we are proactively planning the grinding hub as a hybrid concept. And what does this mean? We will be offering web sessions in the run up to the trade fair. From the 29th of March, immediately after the Grinding Hub preview, exhibitors will be able to give 20 minute presentations to raise customers' interest. And that will be live and on site in Stuttgart around six weeks later. The idea is to link up um, contracts and generate leads. And it also increases visibility and extends reach internationally. In in addition, we will be offering exhibit exhibitors a platform for the duration of the exhibition. And we have a moderated event that um, takes place. And we are testing for the first time a video production for exhibitors. Short films from 60 to 90 seconds with professional processing allow customized implementation as a sand tour. And thanks to a virtual enhancement of the exhibitor profile, we are also offering a digital company profile for every exhibitor on the Grinding Hub website. So company information, contact details, photos, videos, company news, and much more can be published there. This completes the profile of each and every exhibitor and forces direct contact through customers in the run-up to the trade fair. Consequently, attendance at the trade fair and the associated services will be communicated to a wider audience and promises a higher user rate. We are convinced that the Grinding Hub is set to become a new hub for grinding technology. So every two years from May onwards, Stuttgart will be the place for the industry. The trade fair is focused clearly and um, orientated internationally. And we create an attractive offer that is um, org has been organized very well by our hosts. And we are contributing to a hybrid trade concept and will be present at the Grinding Hub. Of course, we hope we have convinced you first and foremost with our substantive arguments. Nonetheless, our latest figures published on the 25th of March 2022 are also worth having a look. In total, 350 exhibitors from 23 countries have registered for the Grinding Hub. They cover 33 industry sectors connected with grinding technology and will take some um, 17,500 square meters of exhibition area distributed across halls 7, 9 and 10. The 
top five sectors include cylindrical grinding machines, grinding, polishing and honing equipment, tool and cutter grinding machines, disposal and processing of coolants and lubricants, as well as surface grinding machines. 181 exhibitors come from Germany, followed by Switzerland with 51 companies and Italy with 33 manufacturers. Exhibitors from Austria, France, Japan and the USA have also registered. All these figures demonstrate how extensively and diversely the grinding hub is positioned. We cover the entire spectrum of grinding technology and have been able to convince numerous exhibitors based on our concept to take part in the premiere on the new trade fair. Against this backdrop, we are confident that the grinding hub will be a real winner for visitors too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the previous speakers for giving us insights into the industry information on the establishment of the new trade fair and for presenting the trade fair concept. I would now like to add a few details on information and location and the trade fair. Stuttgart as being the trade fair location and also being um, a city of um, um, technology and um, Good food. First of all, I would like to thank you how happy am I am to see you again in the part, as part of this digital conference. And I will also be happy to welcome you in person here in Stuttgart in May, because we from Stuttgart, we are hosts with real passion, whether it's our own events with hosted trade fairs or with this um, new constellation for the Grinding Hub being a cooperation partner of the VDW. We are always happy to contribute to the success of our customers and partners. Martin Goebel just presented it. The Grinding Hub premiere will take place in Hall 7, 9 and the Paul Horn Hall, which is Hall 10 of the western part of the Stuttgart Trade Fair grounds. We use the western entrance as a main access to the event, which gives us ideal conditions for all types of potential hygiene requirements and accreditation requirements that will be applicable in May. And since we have this new connection to the tram U6 at the western entrance, this entrance can be more easily reached from Stuttgart and from the airport. The trams, they uh, go in 10 minute um, cycles and they commute between the eastern entrance and the western entrance. And it only takes about one minute to switch entrances. An additional benefit in the west is its own conference area. On the upper level of the western entrance, we have the flexibly designable conference rooms with space for more than 700 people. And you have access to the roof terrace from all rooms and can enjoy your view of the Rothaus Park. And you can see how people mingle at the around the grinding hub shops, uh, halls. In parallel to the grinding hub, we have additional events such as the gas station and car wash or the invest and the care plus. These events are separate and independent events and don't offer any synergies between the visitors and the um, exhibitors. As many of you already know, the grounds of the trade for Stuttgart are directly close to the international airport. We have a new tram station and here trade fair attendants can um, come to the western entrance with only with 150 steps and if you take if you walk from the airport to the western entrance it takes you 50 minutes we have a business cycle at the airport to stuttgart which means that international guests can comfortably get here in the morning and fly back in the evening and since the trade fairgrounds are located between the airport on one side and the highway on the other side, we have perfect conditions for traveling here. We have direct connections to the A8 highway, to the B27 federal highway and um, federal route, and the international airport, as well as the regional train station, the tram station, and bus stations. And here on the slide, you can see examples for connections to Stuttgart, taking either your own car or taking the German railway system. And um, the Grinding Hub ticket includes a travel ticket for public transport. It's already included. So just show your badge and you can use all lines of public transport here in Stuttgart. 
And in addition to the bus connection and regional train S bahn, we also have the U6 tram, which has been in operation since the beginning of the year. So we have two connections from the Stuttgart downtown area connecting uh, Degerloch in 30 minutes to um, to the airplane airport and to the trade fair center. And the regional train takes 27 minutes. And just to give you a bit of information on the city of Stuttgart, and when you stay here at the Grinding Hub, we have prestigious castles and uh, old architecture, and you can see automotive museums, barrack castles, and the first, the world's first TV digital tower made of reinforced concrete. So a lot to discover after the trade fair has ended. And those of you, of course, who work much should also enjoy much because um, apart from exquisite um, meals and cuisines, we also have down to earth traditional cuisine, no matter whether you choose the so called Käse Spätzle, which are cheese noodles or Maultaschen or Schupfnudeln, we have lots of traditional meals here. And wine has a very um, special position here as well. When you get to the main station, you will see the first vineyards in Stuttgart already. So to cut a long story short, Stuttgart has a lot of to offer as an after work um, program, and you can convince yourself of that in May. And being a good host, I can give you more tips later. Thank you very much for your attention. I would then pass the floor to Dr. Schaefer of the DW, who wants to show you, tell you something about the visitor campaign. Thank you very much. Well, after all these facts and figures that you've already heard about, so for, we want to give you more information. We were thinking about how we can raise visitors' awareness to this new present, to this new concept. And so it's the UGO, UGO, the unknown grinding object. And that's the image we would like to use in order to convey the new and the unknown, both the trade fair and also the innovations which are presented by our exhibits. So we want to put that at the center of attention, the unknown grinding objects, they represent everything which is new that you will see here in May at the trade fair. The grinding hub is new and it's an unknown territory for the industry. That's why we're really excited about what uh, innovations the exhibitors will be presenting. And the awareness for this new universe and industry needs to be put at the foreground. What we thought about is a certain imagery. Um, you should find examples from the um, UFO campaigns that we used to have with representative slogans. And we believe that this is going to catch the attention of people both on social media as in print media or on ad advertising campaigns. and. Um, we are, people will be really fascinated by what is going to be presented at the trade fair grounds in May. We want to reinforce this not only with our activities in the form of ads or even here banners or postings on social media, which we want to include, but we want to include you as well, the media and also the exhibitors with our challenge. Show your UGO you have the opportunity to show your innovation, showcase the exceptional that you want to present here in May as part of a post in the social media. It could be a photoshopped image or a short clip, photos they, that they ca which catch the attention of people so that people will be interested in this trade fair and in your innovations. So we're looking forward to your input, which we will then be communicating with our activities in the social media. Something I would also like to say is that with the Grinding Hub, we have a new international um, meeting point for the industry with this new and modern trade fair concept here in an optimal location transport wise and we are convinced that the industry will find a new home and i'm looking forward to welcome you in may here and i will pass the floor to Ms. becca here who's going to guide us through the day thank you very much
Thank you very much to my three colleagues for giving us information on the trade fair concept and the preparation work. We'd now like to have a small, short Q&A session. It's, you have the opportunity to ask your questions. You can raise, give us a show of hand, and you will then be asked to ask your question live, or you can post your question in the chat. So um, be brave, ask your questions. I don't see any questions at the moment. If there are no questions from the audience, I would like to ask one. I would like to ask Mr. Mai. Well, we've basically reached the end of the COVID restrictions. Restrictions are lifted everywhere and the measures as well, but still people ask themselves whether they will be safe when they attend the trade fair. Um, maybe you can just give us a few words on the hygiene concept of the grinding hub. Yeah, of course. Well, as far as the hygiene concepts are concerned, they are always based on the legally applicable regulations that enforce at the time of the event. Currently, Baden-Württemberg has extended the applicable measures until the 3rd of April. So for the ongoing trade fairs, these known measures are still applicable. You need to wear a face mask, keep a distance, and we have a 3G standard. This is going to change across Germany. As of the 3rd of April, the restrictions will be lifted. So theoretically, you no longer need to test yourselves and you no longer need to wear face masks. But the exception is if we have a regional hotspot, so the either the city government or the regional government can impose restrictions again. But uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that we will not have a hotspot in May here and that we have a free trade fair. Yes, of course, we're looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mai. And now I have a question from the audience. Stefan Elgas of the Metallmarkt magazine and the Aluminum Courier, he wants to know which role the trade magazines play for the trade fair concept, given the fact that social medias are focused on during the advertising campaign. Dr. Schäfer, maybe you can elaborate on that. Well, the trade media are still our most important partners. We want to deliver high quality content report on current trends of the industry, and then that they cannot be represented in a short posting. So we, of course, we continue our cooperation with the trade magazines of content on grinding technology. And that is uh, going to be supplemented in order to get more reach and point out certain activities that you publish, whether this is online or in print media. And it's just a supplement, an extension, basically. But it will not replace the existing media. That's not our objective. Thank you very much, Dr. Schaefer. Mr. Heidegger of the DIMA trade magazine, he wants to know whether we're content with the registration numbers. Well, maybe I can just comment that briefly. Of course, we are happy, very happy with the number of registrations. I think we have 360 exhibitors, more than 360 exhibitors even, and all market leaders in the different product areas, especially in machines, grinding technology tools, and all the peripherals. That's a very complete picture of the industry. So we are very happy with this concept. Thank you. Mr. Fecht asks, on behalf of the automotive industry, there is a trend to electro vehicles. Um, and, and the question is whether the, this trend also reflects in the exhibition area. 
the trend to electromobility is less a question of structuring the exhibitors or products. With this trade fair, we address all the core industries um, in the range of metal machining and which map the value chain. So therefore, the automotive industry is one important partner, uh, aside from machine engineering, um, aircraft industry, medical, but uh, it's not um, in the concept uh, of the exhibitors, but it will be reflected in the structure of visitors that we expect. Thank you. Now I cannot see any other questions, but later we also have time to have a bilateral um, discussion. So I'll get to the next item on the agenda, and that refers to technology. Um, the technology um, we will exhibit at the Grinding Hub. And that's why we are very happy that we have Dr. Sebastian Barth and his colleague, Mr. Yannick Rutke, and they're both from the Chair for Manufacturing Technology and the Laboratory for Machine Tools and Production Engineering. They will talk about climate protection and sustainability as an innovation driver for grinding technology. So that is a very hot topic, and I'll pass the floor to the two gentlemen from Aachen. Mrs. Becker, can you hear me? Brilliant. Perfect. So first of all, thank you very much for this kind introduction. Perhaps you can tell um, the um, team of technicians that they um, give me the whole screen so I can share my slides. Mr. Redken is here as well. Uh, I will um, give the presentation, but Mr. Redker is also going to be here to answer your question. So I'll try to share my screen. Perfect. So I hope you can see my screen with um, the header. Yes. I'm very pleased to be here today and um, to give you this keynote um, and a few impulses uh, from us for the grinding technology industry and to tell you a bit more about um, how climate protection and sustainability uh, plays a role and which challenges um, we will face as a consequence and how we are going to respond to these challenges. Now, if we look at climate protection and the measures that were taken so far, and if we look at how this is going to develop, then there are some main data, for example, Kyoto 1997, Paris 2015, and Glasgow 2021, where many regulations and conditions were put on paper so that we as human beings can be more sustainable. That is understood as an ecological sustainability, but you need to know that this is threefold. You act sustainably if it's ecologically sustainable, economically sustainable, but also socially sustainable. So you have to consider all the three factors. And at present, we usually focus on the ecological part because it's a um, very pressing issue of urgency. Unfortunately, um, in um, the past, we have also realized that there is a lack of resources. This is a major influence. And as a company, a manufacturing company, you cannot really do anything against it. So in machine engineering, 89% of the companies are suffering from this shortage of intermediate products. And uh, after the DAHK, or according to them, DIHK, they said that the shortage of skilled workers is greater than before the pandemic. 
and 179 days remain uh, the jobs um, remain averagely unoccupied so the situation is increasingly changing and we have to respond to that and if that wouldn't be enough yet let's have a look at the uh, prices for energy and you can see from 2017 to 2020 or up to today if you roughly calculate it the energy prices have increased um, by 44 percent and we don't know where this is going to end and on top of that we have um, levies which are continuously increasing um, for example here the co2 levy from 21 to 24 five there is a steep increase that is plus 120 percent because um, per ton of co2 it will increase 250 euro and in germany we also face a very high um, price for industrial electricity and that has an impact on um, com on competitiveness so the question is how can we respond to that as a german company now, the climate change leads to a production turnaround, and that is, will be a forced turnaround. So in the production technology, we used to have specific um, targets, but these targets will change or are already changing. And costs and time flexibility um, all play an important role. And of course, the ecological sustainability um, is in the focus now. On the right hand side, you see the performance of technological systems. And uh, that is um, a very known curve in science and to show what shifts into the focus. And we can see the plateau of automated manufacturing. So the next step would be um, a data-driven manufacturing process. So that is a huge challenge if you have a company with many machines. But today I want to show you where the benefit for this would be. So on the one hand, um, the targets um, change, but by creating a specific databases, we can um, be fit for this situation um, then we had um, Peter Drucker already a few years ago he said you can't manage what you don't measure now the first step we would have to take would be um, to make things measurable and if you look at a production um, and what it would look like if we could measure it uh, we um, here in Aachen we um, once went through the entire process chain so you see a rotor shaft which is used in electric motors and as a research institute we made that ourselves um, with several options uh, across the entire um, process chain and of course grinding was part of that process because grinding um, is um, key for the finishing at the end it looks rather complicated and complex it was quite a lot of work i can tell you but i can also show you where the benefit of all this effort is so if we go to the next slide and have a look at that part and the process chain that belongs to it then we can see here um, the targets again quality ecology 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 economy um, of course um, the costs of production and the time but you can also see the digital twin and the data we produced in our um, measuring chain allowed us to have a look at which quality we can achieve so this time it was um, possible to determine which quality we will get and we managed to collect information on um, the influential factors on this component so if we um, figured out any defectives that occur during the process chain we could save that and we managed to create the digital twin 
So we know um, the dependencies and which of the factors influence the ecology. So we can also allocate each surface and we can also vary the parameters across the process chain and where we can save um, emissions. And we can also identify how high the costs for production would be and um, how economical it is and which dependencies we have here within the process sequence. So if we uh, make one process a bit shorter, which influence does it have on the grinding part and on the tools and all this can be um, calculated and analyzed and evaluated. In this test sequence, we collected 34,000 data points and that includes all the process data. And in a digitally networked production, you have to implement that. Of course, we have to be aware of the volume of data, but once you have the data, you can retrieve a lot of information. And um, this helps you to respond in the future. I brought along one more example. If you look at this pinion shaft and the individual production steps, then when you look at um, the um, volume of chipping machining um, compared to the rest, then you can see that in grinding, not a lot of material was cut up, but the CO2 equivalent was rather high. Now you could say, well, of course, that's not so nice, but the surfaces we um, create by grinding um, doesn't really have one technology. So you have to go into the process and um, on basis of the data you can identify. And that is um, um, an example um, that was contributed to the Schleif conference this year. So you can determine where the energy is consumed and then you can try to optimize on these positions to reduce the um, electricity consumption. This means you can identify the levers to optimize the production. Of course, you could say, well, everything that shortens the grinding process, um, well, we know if the grinding process is uh, faster, the tool um, suffers. And as a tool manufacturer, well, the tool also needs energy to be produced. So it's not that simple. So you have to neatly um, uh, calculate it. And that is only possible if you also include the tool manufacturers. So there is a high potential to reduce. And that is by uh, reducing um, cooling lubricants and the supply of it um, by having an optimized process. And these are the first, and we call them low hanging fruits um, that we can generate. And this is something we can exploit. Now an interim summary to this, the um, digitally networked production along the process chain enables systematic, systematic evaluation of component related energy and resource consumption. Grinding technology is often the quality determining process at the end of a production chain, and it determines the functionality of a component significantly. This means there is a very high potential for climate protection and also to remain competitive. And after this quick um, overview of general framework conditions, I would like to have a look at the changes on the product itself. And I brought you two examples, one from aviation. You see the legal framework, which is changing the reduction of noise, CO2 and NOx emissions lead to the jet engines being designed differently in the future. If these targets need to be fulfilled and then um, tr transmissions will be in these engines will be coming into play. And a second example, which was already mentioned by Mr. Fecht on electric mobility. Electric mobility is also going to play a bigger role in the future in grinding technology. Combustion engines, of course, will be replaced um, 
but electric drive systems also or components also have a high potential for grinding technology and i brought an example an optimized uh, ceiling count uh, mates um, counter ceiling mates the first example is uh, the continuous gear grinding of gears. It is very highly productive, has high um, machining performance, and gears that are used for different purposes with these different usages, they um, have a high, less load cap capability, load carrying capability than statically used parts and our target is to increase the load bearing capacity and also the um, service life as such of this product and because of the higher service life or longer service life we also contribute to sustainability on the right hand side you see a scientific um, presentation on the uh, tooth flank pressure which is permissible you can see that as a grinding technologist we still have lots of play or room for maneuver because the roughness uh, can be reduced by um, adjusting the for the grinding process on the next slide this you can see that this can be achieved with um, fine grinding processes and um, polishing grinding processes or these um, surfaces are not easy to achieve with other grinding processes, but these fine and polished grinding processes bear some challenges. And here the grinding technology person with all his or her know-how comes into play. And it will be possible in the future to create the required products of the future. On the right hand side, you can see different, uh, different peak to valley heights and after the fine grinding and the polished grinding and the effect that has on the surface. And the objective is to reach the lower ranges in order to improve the load carrying capability for these products. And this is only possible with the right know-how and the machine technology and the combination of all shareholders in this grinding process. Another example I brought to you, we are here in the electric mobility field. Electric mobility causes problems which hadn't been that important in the past to get into the focus. On the left hand side, you see a typical diesel engine. Then if you go further to the right, you see Formula One engines and then electric motors. So we have the speeds of these individual engines or motors, and you can see that with the electric mobility, this required speed is significantly increasing, which causes um, certain leakage rates of sealed systems. In an engine, you always have a shaft turning, and this is sealed with a, with a ring seal or an annular seal. And if we have a certain topography of the shaft, which is not optimal, then it can happen that your shaft is dried up and causes an engine or motor damage. You can see this on the right hand side with the increasing speed, this conveying value or the transporting value of the surface um, increases if it has a bad quality. So the faster, the quicker your shaft rotates in the engine, the quicker your lubricant can be removed away from the system putting the engine or motor in a dry condition. And so this problem has not been at the focus of attention and because it wasn't necessary to look at it. And now with these high speeds and electric mobility, it looks entirely different. And here we have challenges again, challenges for grinding technology because these structures need to be familiarized with and you need to be able to handle these different structures. If you have certain laser scanning microscopes, you can look at the structures and see the nice grooves here on the left-hand side they can be identified with a certain software. The orientation of these grooves can also be um, assessed and you see a nice um, distribution, an optimal distribution. But if these grooves either orient to the right or to the left, this can turn into the effect that we have leakages because when we increase the speeds, we're currently doing examinations on that, in particular Mr. Röttgen, we're looking at the impact of this dressing process or truing process that has on the structures of these shaft electric motors. And we try to identify how precise these um, 
precise these grinding processes of the future need to be in order to avoid these leakages so that we can still achieve these high speeds in electric motors. And here grinding technology is really important because we can take a very close look at that, the machine technology, the dressing te techniques, and we need to be able to produce the parts that are necessary for that. On that note, I would like to give you another interim conclusion. Um, the transparency of the um, energy and resource consumption is going to play a bigger role, but we also need to have insights on the correlation between the component properties, the new components and their functional behavior. And we saw in, in two quick examples what the role of the surface roughness is and or the micro uh, lead free sealing properties. So the cause and effect relationship and grinding will continue to remain an important factor for the design of grinding processes. And you can see that these developments um, also show us that we will need to cater to a growing number of impacts and grinding technology and handle them. Something similar was uh, said at the beginning of the century by Mr. Stephen Hawking. Most of you are familiar with him. He said that I think the next century will, will be the century of complexity and complexity is going to be play a an increasingly important role in production engineering and in grinding technology. And if we look at the grinding technology with its usual factors, you see the four target factors that we already talked about at the beginning of my talk. We need to include them more than before. It doesn't look that complex when you look at it for the first time, but you can tell by the title who masters the complexity in function and consumption optimized processes because if we look at the individual components in detail you see what is behind such a machine we need to design a machine with energy efficiency you need to have the know-how and data capturing plays a role and how can you optimize processes in a machine by using artificial intelligence for example if you look at tools in detail there's also lots of innovations and as a tool maker you need to make sure that you save resources and how do you handle scarcity of resources and how can you still ensure that a tool has a long service life in the future the same for dressing tools we have con con constant innovations and you have seen what um, these dressing processes can play in electric mobility how can you automate dressing processes in order to minimize wear on tools and how can you have an automated measurement of where of your dressing tools and so on and also the cooling lubricants it's also a big field and we have also seen how high the impact of the cooling of a process is with all its peripherals in order to save energy what are the possibilities that we will have in the future if we move away from all oil-based or fossil-based fuels or raw materials and replace them with sustainably recyclable bio-based lubricants and and what is the uh, role of the lubricant feed system? We want to manage um, grinding processes so that they're more economically feasible in the future and more sustainable. And in addition to that, the general knowledge on new developments in grinding technology. I, of course, uh, love making my contribution here. And that's a very important component which will be um, something that we will see in the future is the human machine teaming how can modern machines with an embedded artificial intelligence can cooperate together with our colleagues and employees that's um, it's um, a deliberate choice of the word teaming you really need to make sure that the individual stakeholders are able to collaborate quite closely and on a trust basis. And it's also important how we can guarantee that the younger generation has this deep knowledge and get this knowledge that our long-term employees already have. That's a challenge which we need to master in grinding technology in the future. And last but not least, the material that we process here, we will also see certain challenges. 
of course, we have uh, quality fluctuations. If there's no short um, cuts or uh, scarcities, we will also see other materials which will play a role. That's other, another challenge. It's very thrilling for us as scientists, but here we just need to know exactly how we can approach these things. And I guess the flexibility will play a role because, for example, electric mobility is getting more and more popular so that the batch sizes will shrink and we will need to be more flexible in our grinding technology. Well, now, if I look at this highly complex system and try to um, break that down to these three um, application examples I showed, so with some uh, reduction of power consumption in production, tribologically optimized seal mating surfaces and um, increasing of the load capacity of gears, then you will have to look at all the three in detail to align them properly, because only them, they will be um, able to um, create functionality of resource saving systems and to increase the component life and the power density of technical components. And this means they would reduce the energy consumption, the resource consumption, and also the component weight. And all together, it will reduce the CO2 footprint. And this leads to the fact that competit competitive <laughs> competitiveness increases. So if you would start today to invest to um, make some things um, more sustainable, either social, ecologically or economically, it will pay out in the long term because it increases the competitiveness that you have on the market. Now, to make it all manageable, this is, of course, a challenge. And here, I would just like to give you um, a little input. We showed you the Aachen model of grinding technology, and it will lead more and more to interdisciplinary teams. They need to be networked and orchestrated. And you need to get onto a sensor level to capture data, and you need to share this. And you will have to work in interdisciplinary team to tap this data because you need technology, sensors, um, employees, and um, data, and link them all so that you can meet the four targets that we set. So on this note, I would like to give you this um, structure on which it, this can all be based. And again, a little conclusion, it will be um, to make complexity manageable and to create um, products um, managing all the grinding processes with um, all the parties included. And of course, um, um, of benefit are trade fairs, conferences to exchange knowledge. And that's why I'm really happy uh, about the Grinding Hub being a platform where we can meet and exchange our views um, and where we see all the equipment in machinery and that we can discuss that on site, live. Then Schleiftagung um, that was hosted by us for the first time will also contribute to this aim and also research networks from industry and science together will tackle these um, issues and find ways how we can solve this and bring it into a fruitful future um, where we are competitive. On that note, I would like to thank you for um, having me. I would like to thank you for listening. And of course, I'm uh, happy to answer your questions and i think mr redko will also be there and i would also like to thank mr redko because he supported me um during the preparation for this talk so thank you for this and i wish you a lot of success today 
and I'm looking forward to meeting you on the Grinding Hub in Stuttgart. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bart, for giving us these interesting insights on the trends of grinding technology. And here we will also have a short Q&A session. And we already have a couple of questions in the chat. Mr. Heidecker from DEMA magazine asks, topic like sustainability or the problems of supply chains are part of your research activities. In which way do you support companies to shape these new ways into the future? Thank you for this question. Um, we do that on several layers. One uh, level is on um, the networking of machines. I already talked about the adaptive networking of machines um, in our institute. We connected them and recorded data along the process chain. And now we know um, which data we have to capture to calculate how um, successful it is in terms of um, economy, ecology, and how you have to use the data to generate added value and um, to have a sustainable change. This is a one level. And additionally, we have a database and experienced um, experience based support that we offer the companies. But my point of view is that we have to look at the entire process chains um, to optimize them. Of course, every single process is part of a chain, but we have to look at the whole thing. Thank you. Then there is a question by Mr. Fecht. Now, with the view on the Laser Polishing Congress last year, you also look into the opportunities of laser polishing and um, the evaluation of it. Certainly, this is an alternative technology, but now with regard to productivity, I'm rather sure that the grinding process uh, is out of reach. It depends on how the laser technology changes in this range. It is a technological alternative, but not an industrial alternative yet. Thank you. You will also be um, available in the breakout sessions for more questions which might arise. Yes. Now I have to take a step back because Mr. Raymond Castalis from Spain has uh, a question to the previous item of the agenda. He's asking whether the grinding hub uh, will be competition to the AMB or um, complementary to the AMB. And I think Mr. Mai is in question. Mr. Mai is on his way. Thank you for this question. Well, we take it as a complementary um, event. We already heard the registration numbers of gr the grinding hub. And of course, on the AMB, um, grinding technology is one of um, the key um, topics. Uh, it will be in Hall 5 as usual. And we have all the renowned names and um, the companies um, that represent this industry um, on the AMB. So we um, see it as a complementary event. Well, thank you very much to all the speakers we have heard so far. And we will now jump right into the elevator pitches. We are very pleased that we um, have um, 16 exhibitors here who took on our invitation and they have a three minute pitch each and will uh, present their highlights for the trade fair. So I will start um, calling up the different exhibitors. First of all is Mr. Schäfer, he is the head of product management of um, Knapp. 
GmbH. Knapp Niles Coburg. So, microphone is on. Verzeihung, bitte. Okay, äh, Verzeihung. Liebe Fachpresse, liebe Zuschauer, ähm, wie um, gesagt. Hello, everybody. I'm Konstantin Schäfer. I'm the head of product manager uh, at Cup Niles. We are a, a group of companies of machine tools, dressing tools, um, grinding tools, but also measuring centers. As Mr. Bart already said, there are many technologies and a lot of know how or challenges that um, need to be solved. And we offer the whole range of tools to our customers. And how do we want to show this on the trade fair? Well, similar to um, the motto of the trade fair, bring solutions to the surface. And this is how we have um, designed our stand. So we show six different examples from key industries and on basis of these exhibits we show the challenges of the industry and how we can respond to these challenges so with which tools we enable our customers to handle these challenges the examples are from the automotive industry and um, we already heard about the e-motor we heard about um, the aerospace uh, industry we heard about new um, um, turbine technologies. We will also see some examples from wind power generation and um, compressor technology and also robotics. For example, on the e um, drive trains, we heard that we have um, high speeds. A combustion engine has 2,500 to 8,000 revs per minute, whereas Electric motors um, um, rotate five to 20 times faster. And that generates a noise which needs to be suppressed. And you need new technologies and know how um, to combat this. And that is um, similar to aviation, where we have um, these uh, novel um, planetary drives. And these also bear new um, requirements. And we have been looking into this already for years so we can answer these questions and also in terms of wind power we now want to expand the wind parks to be um, um, to become independent from the energy from russia so um, new offshore parks will be built and they will be larger and larger and um, therefore the components will also be larger and also with these large components, um, we can provide um, uh, the possibility to produce them fast, although they are so large. And we can show you all of this on our stand. And if you come to visit us, we have also a little treat. You can see our latest and um, most expansive development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schäfer. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Dr. Christoph Schiffers. He is um, in the product management of, at Semicon, Semicon in Würselen. Thank you for this introduction and welcome at Semicon. And thank you to um, the organizers and hosts of Grinding Hub and for inviting us. I'm here in our machine halls. Um, these are deposit machines and the grinding hub is grinding. We are our coaching tools and we want to show customers and visitors how um, a micrometer thick layer of coating makes the difference to tools. We want to show you how you can win new markets with a coating machine. And on the trade fair and on and here, I would like to answer three questions. Why should a tool manufacturer have their own coating machine? Why should it be one of these? And now, well, I start with the first one. You invest into grinding, perfect grinding. So why should you have your own coating machine? First of all, you will be faster. You can shorten the process chain because um, all the value is added in-house. And of course, that gives you an advantage in the competition you'll be better because all the effort 
that you have put into grinding and the geometry can be put onto the coating in a very optimized manner. And this um, makes you different from your competitors. And the investment, we say from 200,000 euro, um, a coating machine makes sense. Yeah, at the top, you can see this acronym, high IMPS. So why should you take a machine like this? Because the coating is growing by high energy pulses. So it's not like a conventional machine, but it's pulsed power. And therefore you have the control over the process. And that is the decisive difference because this way you can adapt it much better. And I have brought along two examples a uh, conventional um, sh shaft um, milling machine. So these surfaces are um, um, were protected, but they're very sensitive against high feed rates. So now it's suddenly you can have these um, um, high quality coatings and you can use them much better. Now, if we get to these um, flip plates, they are used well. Every micrometer is um, used. And with this technology, you can um, take off up to 12 micrometers. And you can also adjust um, the pressure to a low pressure. And you can synchronize the cathode pulses. So manageable um, power. So this is a feature that you find in no other coating um, machine. So these two very different examples, um, the, the coating on the shaft, very thin, and a thicker one on the flip plate. And this is something for which you needed um, several machines in the past, and you can do that now with only one machine. The world has become uncertain and um, the future is really hard to foresee. <laughs> Three minutes was the limit, Mr. Schmidt. So may I ask you to get to the end? Thank you. So why a machine by Cinecon? We deliver machines and in the hall next to us is biggest uh, machine worldwide and all the experience of this is in this machine. Thank you for the invitation and for listening and I'm happy to answer your questions later. Thank you, Mr. Schiffers. Um, questions can be posed in um, the breakout rooms. Um, now next, I would like to ask Mr. Riefling, who is the international sales manager with IEW in Gumpoldskirchen in Austria. Thank you very much for these introductory words. Um, my name is Simon Riefling. I'm the international sales manager of the IEW company. We are doing um, induction heating systems in Austria and we are located south of Vienna and we are developers of um, soldering systems, vacuum soldering systems, and we support our customers in their optimal production by giving them optimum um, conditions. Or The problem of many customers is a uh, problem many customers are facing is that the employees are getting closer to their retirement and it's difficult to find skilled workers in this field. Not that many people want to stain their hands with the flux or that flux dampers. They don't want to inhale the, the vapors. Um, and that's and also because our customers need diamond grinding um, um, tools that are no longer solderable. We, some of our long-term customers addressed us in 2017 and asked us if we could develop a suitable product for them in this field. And we catered to their needs by developing this vacuum sorting system, VVBM200, which is a vertically designed vacuum sorting system where you can 
um, use products from 180 times 350 millimeter products, and uh, you can vacuum solder these products in several positions. This gives us solutions to several problems. First of all, the independence of skilled labor, which um, of course is um, a problem right now. And we just need someone who's quite handy to apply the soldering paste. <laughs> and in addition, the working conditions are far better than, than in conventional um, induction systems because we don't have any vapors that are produced. The vacuum soldered products do not need to be flushed intensively after the cleaning, um, the, the production system. You don't need to have jet blasting machines or anything. IEW has a quite extensive expertise in soldering technology. And we can also advise our customers on the soldering tools that they need in addition and to the, the parameters as well. We will be presenting our vacuum soldering system as a fully functional tool at the trade fair. And also, a VVBM 150, which is a bit smaller but um, can be used for locally purchased components, such as the Pfeiffer vacuum pump. And um, because of the simple and more compact design, it's less cost intensive. We're looking forward to the trade fair in Stuttgart and we hope for many visitors and good talks with them. We will also be soldering components at the uh, trade fair and we want to show you the difference between vacuum soldered and induction soldered components. So we are located in Hall 9, Stand B35. We're looking forward to your visit and I'm available for questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Riefling. And now I would like to ask Dominic Dippel of Keber Spindel Technology in Rollbach to, come, Rollbach to come to the floor. Yes, hello. I would like to welcome everybody as well. My name is Dominic Pippel, Dippel, and I'm responsible for the sales in Austria for Kiba Technology. Um, we have a traditional company that has been offering tailor-made spindle technology for 60 years. And in 2018, it was taken over by the Keba Group. And at the beginning of this year, it was integrated into the Keba Spindle Technology GmbH. We consider the spindle business as a strategically important part of industrial automation within the entire Keba Group. We have qualified and motivated skilled workers and a highly modern machine park. And so we offer the advice or consulting development, design and production all from a single source. We have a standard program and we also have customized machines or parts for individual users. Our customers benefit from high quality spindle technology for production, serious production, just as for special machine production. Our belt driven belt spindles and engine spindles or motor spindles can be used in many applications for milling, grinding and so on. And they convince because they're so high quality and um, we have vibrational supported um, solenoid bearing spindle, which helps us to realize an entirely new boring pressure process. We can speed up the process by 200 to 300%, while at the same time reducing tool wear by more than half. So you want to have a deep dive with our experts, then let us be your tech buddy and visit us in Stuttgart at the Grinding Hub in Hall 10. Our stand is C75. We're looking forward to your visit, your Kiba team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dippel. And I would now like to welcome Tobias Langer, who is the managing director of Lana Company in Kippenheim. Good morning, everybody. I am looking forward uh, and I'm very delighted to be here today. Mr. Lanner, we lost the sound. We are developing and producing um, grinding slurry preparation. Of course, wherever there's grinding, there's slurry. And uh, slurry in a compound with the lubricant or in a mix with lubricant is 
a mix which cannot be disposed of as such. And for ecological and economical reasons, we need to dispose of it separately. So the oil can be filtered and can be reused in the machine again and can be used for an entire amount of cycles, an, an indefinite amount of cycles. And the slurry can also be disposed of, and only if it has been optimally recycled will it no longer be detrimental to the environment. But how can we separate this mix optimally? Well, we have different processes for that. First of all, we have a centrifugal process. There is an and you separate the physical solid from the liquid amount of part, and it will be available as a powder afterwards. It's almost completely free of liquid. And it only takes up a tiny amount of the original volume. It can be disposed of quite easily. The second process is the bricketing. Here, this powder is turned into um, such, such pellets, I would say. And so the cooling lubricant is um, continuously pressed or pushed, uh, compressed, and can then be recycled again, reused in the machine and can be um, disposed of without any danger. So both processes have their pros and cons. We will be happy to tell you more about them at the grinding hub when you visit our stand in May. And we would like to showcase our machines and processes. So we will be happy to welcome you in May in person in Stuttgart. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lana. We've had some audio problems, but maybe that's a good um, connection point. We can get back together in the breakout rooms later. The next person I would like to welcome is Thomas Morgenroth, who is sales manager for special clamping system or special attentioners. It's Heinbuch in Marbach. Ja, auch von mir seitens Heimbuch ein herzliches Willkommen in die Runde. Vielen Dank für die Einladung. Mein Name ist Thomas Mornroth, ich bin der Verkaufsleiter Sonderberufte in Deutschland. Ähm, Heimbuch als familiengeführtes Unternehmen 1951 gegründet, heute in der dritten Generation. Heimbuch schreibt heute 1000 Mitarbeiter weltweit an internationalen Standorten. Unser jüngster Standort ist 2020 mit in die Gruppe aufgenommen, die Firma Fischer und Bode Automatisierung. Am um, Standort in Lindau am Bodensee. Diese uh, Teil der Gruppe ermöglicht es uns, komplett Automatisierungslösungen für die Herausforderungen in unserer Kunden bereitzustellen. Als Heimbuch haben wir einen breiten Katalog von 8000 Produkten für alle um, rotierenden und stationären Maschinen. Wir gelten als Trendsetter am Markt für die Innen- und Außenspannung. Wir fühlen uns in jedem Prozess und in jedem Fertigungsschritt zu Hause, auch im Schleifen. Wir sind mühgenau unterwegs und eigentlich jedes Getriebeteil, Zahnräder etc. wird mit einem Heimbuchsystem heute schon an großen Wahrscheinlichkeit von uns gespannt. An sich als Merkmal für unser Produkt ist einmal die mühgenaue Spannung, aber zum anderen auch die Rüstfreundlichkeit. Wir schauen immer, dass die Maschine wieder schnell und besparen ist und gelten ja als absolute Experten. Aber nicht nur im Standardbereich fühlen wir uns ganz wohl, sondern wir sind auch im Bereich der Sonderlösungen ähm, zu Hause. Das heißt, kommen Sie da gerne auf uns zu und ähm, lassen Sie sich von uns beraten. Wir sagen immer gerne, einmal gibt es den Anzug von der Stange, aber natürlich auch den Anzug als Maßanzug. Ja. Ähm, wir haben diese Experten auch physisch vor Ort an der Messe, aber nicht nur als Personen, sondern auch noch in Hardware, also unsere Schlüssel. Live-Donne haben wir dort. Hier können wir, wie gesagt, auch mühgenau spannen, was ins, an sich genau rund für diese Messe passt. Ich freue mich auf Ihre Fragen im Anschluss. Ansonsten sehen wir uns gerne auf der Messe live und da können wir auf jedes Thema noch eingehen. Vielen Dank.
Koch, Manager Business. And I would like to greet Christoph Koch, Manager of Business Area Automotive and CTO at Posalux in Biel, Obien, in Switzerland. To uh, get this clarified, I'm responsible for the business area automotive in the area sales. Um, I have the pleasure today to introduce to you Posa Looks and the newest technology we are going to show on the Grinding Hub this year. Posa Looks was founded in 1943. Uh, we are located in Bilbien, and uh, this is where people speak French and Swiss German. Um, the area is also known for the watches. Around Biel, we spoke, speak about the micro valley, and the watch industry was the origin. origin. Uh, we are a leading machine tool <coughs> company for micro technologies for mass production, and our main markets are Europe, uh, Asia, and the US. Our customers are found in the electronics and automotive industry. Technological wise, we offer femto laser, electro discharge machining, and conventional me mechanical machining technologies. In the automotive market for microhole drilling for injection systems, Posalux is known as the world market leader. Even though there is still a trend towards zero combustion engines, this market is still very interesting and we will continue in this market in the future. In the electronics market, we are known for the ultra speed machines from Posalux for printed circuit board production. And our name stands for technological excellence since more than 50 years. We benefit from synergies between the markets. Laser machining in the test equipment industry was the launch for a new adventure, and we have sold many machines to drill holes, micro holes, and to so-called guide plates to our customers. But what are these holes for, and what comes in it? Probe needles, we found out. And therefore, we developed a process and a cut to cut and shape probe needles with only a couple of millimeter in length and the diameter of 40 micron and less, which is hard, half of the average of a human hair. Today, our innovation spirit and passion for micro machining allows us to present our disruptive solution for grinding. We replace the grinding tool by laser light and achieve equivalent quality. FTO was born. FTO, Femco Turning Operation, can machine ultra small and highly precise parts and achieve results equivalent to grinding processes. You may say, this is a grinding show. Why do you present laser technology? FTO replaces the grinding tool by a laser beam. No dressing and lubrification is required. FTO allows you a free, <clears throat> allows you a contact-free machining of the workpiece with no mechanical forces being applied. There are various materials that can be machined without any issues like ceramics, hardened steel, hard metal, etc. You want to learn more about our <clears throat> solution for the surface? Then see you in Stuttgart in the Grinding Tech in Hall 10, who's A75. Thank you very much for your attention and we're looking forward. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Koch. And um, ich würde uh, jetzt begrüßen Heiko and Now I would like to welcome Heiko Zimmermann, Sales engineer from Haas in Trossingen. Hello to everybody who is a fan of grinding technology. I welcome you here at Haas Grinding Technology in Trossingen. I would like to tell you why you should absolutely come and see us in Hall 10 on the Grinding Hub. We would like to celebrate two world premieres with you. First of all, we present our new automation software solution, the Haas Multimation Software, for the very first time to the public. It will be the central connection between grinding machine and application. And um, it also includes a measuring of components and downstream processes or main time parallel processes like cleaning and packaging. We show you the new software um, where with a new palletizer system that allows us um, to use 50% smaller footprints so you can um, save up to 20 pallets and that is an um, autonomous time that we have never witnessed before and the second world premiere we would like to show you 
is our new has a multi grinding machine that is an absolute game changer in the grinding technology world. This production wonder on the smallest footprint changes the grinding um, discs and in less than four seconds, and it allows um, rotary blades and um, needles and tools and produce them all on one machine. And another product we want to show you on the trade fair is the multi-grind CBXL machine. That's our universal genius machine, easily scalable for complete machining of components up to 3,200 millimeters length. With an individual uh, modular system, you can configure the machine uh, according to your requirements. And we can go up to 57 kilowatt spindle power, individual um, um, machine bed settings, and you can program it directly from the 3D model. And you can combine grinding technology individually. So you can have a um, shell grinding, um, profile grinding, and it can be combined also with classic grinding technology. And all this is paired with tool change technology and dressing technology. And this is what we would like to show you during the grinding hub. And we can also show you the details then. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Zimmermann. Now we will welcome Walter Graf, Senior Project Manager at Reishauer in Wallisell in Switzerland. Walter Graf is still muted. Now we are ready. Hello there and welcome to Reishauer. My name is Walter Graf. Let me start by telling you a little bit about Reischauer, our philosophy and what we showcase at the Grinding Hub exhibition. Reischauer is a Swiss company with a long history, starting with making hand tools over 200 years ago. Some 75 years ago, we began building gear grinding machines. In fact, Reischauer invented the continuous generating gear grinding process and has been improving on it ever since. Now, let me tell you about our philosophy. Our gear grinding machines are at the center of our circle of competence, the core of our thinking about gear grinding. We have added many elements to the grinding machine to create this circle of competence. For example, this includes automation, loading, unloading of gear parts, the full range of tooling, such as grinding wheels, diamond dresses, work holding, coolant nozzles, etc., all of which is made in-house in our Swiss plants. Furthermore, the circle includes grinding application technology and customer service. The latest addition to our circle of competence is Argus, our process and component monitoring system. Now this leads me straight to the Grinding Hub exhibition. There, Argus is at the center and is presented as a digital experience. We'll show you what we mean by making the gear grinding process transparent. Argus allows us to look into the process at a hitherto impossible level. Come and convince yourself. Of course, we will showcase other products too. There are four technology tables with exhibits and explanatory animations. These include the grinding wheels, polishing wheels, the full range of diamond dressing tools, work holding for gear grinding applications in mechanical and hydraulic solutions. When visiting our booth, be assured of a friendly reception by our competent engineers. They can help you to explore the best ways to optimize, optimize your production. Now, I can only say that we look forward to meeting you at the Grinding Hub. Cheers, see you there, and bye for now. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Graf. 
Und jetzt begrüßen wir Markus Bäumler. And now we would like to welcome Markus Bäumler, Sales Director of LaserTech at from DMG Mori in Leonberg. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present the DMG Mori technology. As mentioned, my name is Markus Bäumler. I'm the responsible sales director for the LaserTech products. DMG Mori, as a market leader for machine tools, will present in Hall 7, booth 7C10. There will be three machines on the show. I would like to start with a new LaserTech 50 precision tool. This is the world's biggest and most efficient laser machine for diamond tool production. A maximum tool diameter of 355 millimeter is possible. Combined with our high speed mode three, our customers can achieve up to 210% faster speeds and up to 56% lower cost per part compared to EDM. Besides lower cost per part, but of course also the quality of the tool can get significantly lifted by reducing the chipping on the cutting edge. Furthermore, the LaserTech Precision Tool technology is more, most flexible due to the possibility to add chip breakers or defined edge preparation. Experience the LaserTech 50 Precision Tool in line with our new automation PH50. This is the most compact and most cost, cost effective uh, pellet automation from DMG Mori perfectly suitable for up to 22 pieces HSK tools for lights out machining over the weekend. The second machine, the second laser machine on the show is the LaserTech 20 precision tool, the best in class laser machine for diamond tool manufacturing. We will be showing the outstanding flexibility of this nice concept of this nice machine uh, by showcasing rotary milling tools as well as cutting inserts without manual intervention, totally automatically. The LaserTech Precision Tool technology at one glance is lowest cost per part combined with highest product quality and the maximum of flexibility. Besides the laser technology, there will be also a vertical grinding machine from Tayo Koki on the show. The name is CVG6, and this offers high tech quality for vertical grinding on a top price. The CVG6 series or the CVG series is available in three different sizes for parts ranging from 50 millimeter up to 1.3 meter. Special feature is the two extremely stable grinding spindles with an offset of 180 degrees to each other. One for outer grinding and the other one for inner grinding, including a six station automatic tool changer. All machines on our booth will be fully automated. So is the CVG6. It will come with a three station automatic pellet changer. So please visit our booth, Hall 7, booth number 7C10. We are really looking forward to more detailed discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bäumler. We pass the floor to Martin Reichert by Blaster Swiss Loop in Haslerhuxa, Switzerland. Thank you to everybody who is joining this round. I'm Markus Reicher. I'm, I've been um, for 30 years in grinding technology as an application engineer and programmer. We stand for precision for Blaster Swiss Loop. Um, I'm in sales. It's a global company in the third generation. We produce high quality lubricants that can be mixed with water and ones that cannot be mixed with water. And we've been successfully on the market for 60 years. And um, globally, we have around 600 employees. And do you know why um, the coolant lubricant is so important? Well, a process study from France and our daily work show that the coolant lubricant, 0.5% of the process costs, but um, the, um, the effects that I have to positively influence the process um, are 90%, 95% even. 
So um, the machine downtime, the machine capacity, and all this can be influenced in a positive way. Well, our headquarters is in um, Switzerland, close to Bern, and we have uh, one of the most modern and largest um, research labs for coolant lubricants in the industry. We also have a modernly equipped in industry center where we have different CNC machines for machining with defined and undefined grinding. So milling, turning and grinding. And that is the service that we offer at Plaza Swiss Loop. All this is a decisive and central success factor. And I'm very proud of that to say that this is a unique selling proposition. It's a liquid, we are um, generating a liquid tool. So I'm very pleased um, to be here and to be on the grinding hub. So get in touch. It's definitely worthwhile to exchange views with the experts from the industry. And this is the reason why we want to exhibit at the grinding hub at um, 7C30, you can find us. Thank you, Mr. Reichert. And next, I'll pass the floor to Paul Kössel from the United Grinding Group in Bern in Switzerland. Hello, everybody. Yes, now you can see me. I cannot share my screen. Well, now it works. Um, I'm Paul Kerstel, Business Development, and I'm available for the trade fairs at United Grinding Group. The Grinding Hub, and we can tell you now already, will be the most important trade fair for the United Grinding Group in Europe, um, aside from IMO. So um, direct um, conversations will have a very high uh, importance for us because we want to bring the office closer to our customers. And that's why we're looking forward to this exchange. Aside from our focus on digitalization, we will show 15 machines on 1,200 square meters um, stand footprint. After the unveiling on the IMO in Milano in Mailand, uh, we will show the machine for the first time live in the German speaking regions. And the software based on Core will allow us a new concept of machine and automation. But Core includes much more than a revolutionary operation of machine. It opens up new possibilities to network um, the process. Uh, processes and therefore optimizes it. And it also um, lays the foundation for modern IoT applications and opens the gate to the future. Now the unveiling of the machine will be on the first day of the trade fair at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we will um, introduce our brand. And there's only one exception. Um, and apart from this, we don't uh, um, give anything away before the unveiling of the machine. The only novelty that we will talk about before is um, the Walter Helitronic G200 on a footprint of less than 2.3 square meters. The Helitronic G200 offers um, uh, an innovative machine concept and you have five axis machine with option of for automation. And I hope I could um, raise your curiosity and you can come to see us in Hall 9 at Stand 10, at A50. Thank you, Mr. Kessel. And I welcome Joachim Jekyll, Marketing Communications at Weinheim. Thank you very much, Ms. Becker. Um, at Anchor, we develop and build the grinding, two grinding machines and uh, all the technology around them. We're a family-owned business founded in 1974, and today we're an important player in the global market with around 1,000 employees and more than 2,500 customers around the globe. <clears throat> what is special about us is that 95% of our components come from in-house, 
meaning we don't just build the machines, we build uh, our own uh, automation components. We, we develop our own software for the machines. Um, we, we do our own control and drive technology. Uh, that is all uh, from us ourselves, even the housing for the machines. Now, we think that we owe our growth throughout the years uh, to innovation, and, and we're very much fond of innovation, and we always present our innovations at uh, the, the, the public trade shows, um, and we are so much looking forward to grinding up, uh, not just because of the, the wonderful showground in Stuttgart, uh, but also we think it will be a great platform, and that's why we made this stand uh, unique uh, in at least three ways. Uh, it will be the biggest anchor stand ever that we build, we will have more innovations on the booth than we ever had, and we have a, an entirely new show concept, which really brings to the ground our customer focus philosophy. So let me take you on a quick tour through the stand. Um, we, we start at our, our blank preparation machine, the CPX powerful blank preparation machine, which brings along uh, a Premier uh, with an OD gauge uh, um, in-process measurement system for, for unattended serial production and, and higher surface quality. Um, we can go, go on to, to our highlight exhibit, which is actually a fully automated tool manufacturing cell. Uh, our AIMS concept was made to really bring automation to each and every possible customer in the area of tool manufacturing. This is even um, um, additioned by a, a, a robot-based laser marking machine. So the laser marking also comes from Anka and can be automated in the cell in our Automark X. Now, um, the bigger concept of automation in this cell is mirrored by a smaller one on a single machine. So if you do small batches of tools, regrinding single tools, you can do that and see it at the grinding hub on our FX7, where we demonstrate how you work with RFID technology um, to, to for chaotic manufacturing, basically. Moving on to the next machine, our MX7 will show a complete setup for insert manufacturing. Very interesting, very comprehensive as well. And um, then our top machine, and also relating to the topic of uh, e-mobility that was mentioned before, is uh, the GCX, which focuses on the manufacturing of gear tools. Um, and we will demonstrate how to manufacture a skiving tool in one setup, including in-process measurement and compensation, which is really um, a highlight in terms of the complexity of the measurement as well. Um, and that um, is that. My personal highlight I think will be the kickoff of our really renowned uh, fifth issue of the uh, tool of the year competition. Uh, we will kick this off at the grinding hub so all tool manufacturers can apply um, uh, for this. I'm sure we will again see uh, unbelievable skills from manufacturers around the world. Um, so last year, maybe I can show quickly the winning tool was this. So whoever will beat this, uh, this year will be announced in September. Um, actually, unfortunately not at the AMB, but at the IMDS. And um, we're really looking forward to see you there. We've made a big effort. It will be interesting for everyone who is uh, in our in business and uh, would love to see you at our hall in, uh, at our stand in Hall 10, C51 at Anchor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jekyll. And um, at next, we begrüßen begrüße you, Herrn Dr. Markus. Next, we would like to welcome Dr. Markus Westermeyer of the Spanflug Company in Munich. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Markus Westermeyer. I'm one of the founders and managing directors of Spanflug, and I'm an outlier because I will be presenting a software topic here. I would like to show you how you can use intelligent algorithms to set up a resilient production chain. In the past few years, I guess you no longer need to emphasize that today, I will just uh, share my presentation again. We had quite turbulent developments in the industry. Uh, figures by the BDMA and another association show very volatile market development in the past two years. And procurement has become one of the biggest challenges. 70% of the companies in mechanical engineering, they talk about uh, tight supply chains and bottlenecks. And that even before we had the war in Ukraine. glitch.
So, and the procurement of individual production components causes lots of effort. This is just an example. These screws, box of screws on left hand side, quite easy to procure with an online catalog. And the production part on the right hand side would definitely cause many discussions between the productions and, and um, procurement persons. You have 10 times higher the effort for production parts than in other materials. And we of Spanflug believe that we can improve this. Our algorithm analyzes CAD models and technical drawings in very few moments. Spanflug has a very automated um, calculation process for the production process and the production costs. So our customers get quotations, prices, and delivery times immediately, and they can order complex production parts with a few clicks. That's not the end of it. Our target is to become, to have the most effective interaction between customers and suppliers, the most effective interaction between customers and our production network consisting of more than 4,000 machines at the moment. We have an intelligent production platform, which we have set up and based on our technologies, we can analyze components and can calculate prices and delivery times. By integrating the, the solution on the customer side and the procurement side, we can have a fully digital procurement process. We construct digital twins in our network, and that makes it possible for us to get customized solutions for every order, the, get the most economic machine. We work with real-time information of metal and plastics providers so we can have very precise information as far as prices and delivery times are concerned. And our platform technology can optimally organize entire supply chains. And if we have disruptions in these supply chains, we can find alternative solutions right away. Spanflug will reduce your procurement efforts by as much as 90%, and the procurement process can be reduced from several days to a few minutes. So you draw back on reliable supply chains and um, high delivery loyalty. So we offer you a digital process for lathe parts, milling parts, and also for grinding parts as of the grinding hub. So more than 2,000 customers put our con their confidence in us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Westermeyer. And I would now like to welcome Ingo Wolf, who is the head of marketing service of company Folma in Biberach. Thanks, Ms. Becker. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to welcome you on behalf of the Folma Group. My name is Ingo Wolf. I'm the head of marketing with Folma, and we are located in Germany in the Swabian city of Biberach. We have been in this business for 111 years and it started with um, saws and we had circular saws and um, for many years we are also processing rotational tools as part of a machine portfolio no matter whether we have customers doing drills uh, milling machines or um, grinding tools we have the best and the fitting technology for that from grinding over eroding and laser machining we offer everything and we also have digital and traditional services which makes us the full liner in this field and we're looking forward to the grinding hub because after two years of um, not visiting trade fairs we can finally have live events again we have excellent innovations and excellent projects that we want to showcase to the world. And that's why our motto is 2022. We are really getting it going. And our campaign is based on five pillars or five passwords. Smarter, um, cleaner, more social and stronger and hotter. Our machines will be, we will see five world premieres from our V grind product tools for rotational tools. We will have three new models, but also as far as the machining of circular saws for the flans or the um, free surfaces, we will be presenting two new machines. 
but also tried and proven solutions from the eroding field and laser machining will be presented there. Smarter, because former technologies use digital services, we offer solutions in order to make machines smarter or to improve um, uh, services and um, courses. We also have a web-based portal and we will be presenting the online gate to the digital machine data, providing digital information or um, also offering a web spare parts shop. Cleaner, that's what our environment is supposed to be. We represent energy efficient technologies. We want to save resources and act more sustainably in total. And this also includes long-term relationships to customers, partners, and the workforce, and also sustainable corporate culture. More social, that means that not only social media channels will be used for having exchanges, but we also have personal contacts, face-to-face -face meetings, and we are looking forward to those at the Grinding Hub. Events such as the Grinding Hubs are making us stronger because we have innovative products where we can stabilize a global technology leadership. And last but not least, we have a highly qualified team made up of 800 employees. And so from day to day, we're getting stronger and stronger. My last banner here is this mask. I hope we won't be needing that in May, but with or without face mask, we're looking forward to welcoming you at our stand. You will find us in Hall 7 at C7250. I hope you can all see you there, and thanks for your attention, and looking forward to seeing you in Stuttgart. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf, and Mr. Ruders has signaled that it is now working, so I will pass the floor to him again. Mr. Jürgen Röders from the Röders Company in Soltau. Uh, glad you can hear me now. Röders is renowned as manufacturers for precise um, grinding machines. And what is special on Röders is that we don't only develop the design, but also our controls and the control technology. And our aim is to optimize it to the highest possible precision. 20 years ago, we realized that um, milling um, is restricting the precision. And then we uh, started integrating as one of the first companies um, grinding into the machine. So we successfully um, combine it um, first horizontal, but then also vertical and um, uh, section grinding. And at rotary grinding, uh, we can reach a precision of 0.5 micrometers. The grinding time uh, with a milling precision, uh, milling machines can be combined um, for a very high precision. So far, we had machines from 400 millimeters to 1,400. And now we introduce a machine that uh, has two meters to one meter 80 travel path, and we call it the XXL coordination coordinates machine. And you can have highly um, precise uh, dimensions and also in the round disk range um, to one to two micrometers. And this is possible because of the temperature management in the frame and we want to use it for um, applications in compound materials, but also injection tools with a small radius or machine um, tools. And that is not the only novelty we will show. Um, on top of this, we will show a better um, sound technology um, where we can reach a measurement of um, lower than one micrometer precision. And we will also introduce a machine with large um, grinding disk. That's not um, necessarily something new for grinding technology, but it is new for large milling machines that you can do that automized as well, and that you can automatically change um, large volumes of lubricants. So I hope you're curious now. Um, and of course, I'd be happy to answer your questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Röder. So this is now the end of the round of elevator pitches. Thank you very much to all the speakers who um, took part.
part and gave us an insight into this portfolio, this large portfolio of um, novelties that we can look forward to see at the grinding hub. And I think that um, um, the journalists will have gotten a number of different points they can use for their for their articles and their communication. So now we are going to change into the breakout rooms, which are available in Zoom. You can see the breakout rooms on the screen. So you can just enter the breakout room to talk directly to the representatives of the different companies. And you can ask your questions. You can clarify um, topics or you can make arrangements to meet on the fair. And I will now just release that matchmaking. So it's your initiatives. Use this opportunity to get in touch with the speakers. Um, and um, otherwise, we will see each other latest in May on the Grinding Hub. But well, now you can enter the breakout rooms. And we'll have an official um, farewell afterwards.